All right, hello everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for this live webinar today. Uh, we are so excited to be able to have the Dean and several faculty for SCU's Los Angeles College of Chiropractic with us. Um, in a few moments, they will each introduce themselves. Uh, my name is Luke Phillips. I am um, an Assistant Vice President for the School of Professional Studies. Uh, also uh, oversee marketing and admissions, um, and we do lots of different webinars like these. Uh, every time we like to remind you that you can go ahead and ask any questions you might have if you just type it in the chat area. And so if you have questions for our faculty or dean, go ahead and do that. If this webinar is over and you're watching this on YouTube, you can always send any questions you have to admissions at scuhs.edu. Uh, we also have lots of future webinars and campus preview day and open house live events here on campus. Those are always available at scuhs.edu uh, slash events. And then if you ever at any point want to learn just more about our chiropractic program, suhs.edu slash dc has that as well. Um, or if you are joining us um, later on, or if you want to share this with someone else after you've watched it, this video will be uh, posted up on SCU's main YouTube channel for everyone to see as well. All right, so we will invite you to ask those questions and look forward to answering those for you. So I've introduced myself, so I'm going to pass it on, and we're going to go down the line and have everybody introduce themselves. Good evening. My name is Dr. Thomas Baudet. I currently serve as chair of the Department of Associated Clinical Sciences, or LACC. I've been a chiropractor since 2004, and I've been employed at SCU for over 10 years now. Hi, my name is Anna Facinato. I've been working uh, with chiropractic education for 13 years now. I've been working at SCU for three years now, and I'm currently the chair of the clinical education department for LACC. Hi everybody, I'm Jonathan Egan. I'm the Dean of Los Angeles College of Chiropractic. I've been a chiropractor since 2006, and I've been working here uh, since 2016. Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Aguilera. I'm one of the supervising clinicians here at SCU. I run the uh, Whittier Community Resource Center Clinic with the help of our uh, student clinics, uh, student uh, clinical students. And I've been a chiropractor since 2002 and I've been with uh, SCU for about four years now. Hello, uh, my name is Dr. Hector Rivera Mello. I've been a chiropractor since 2009, and I've worked here uh, at SCU in the radiology department in some form or another for about nine years in January. And um, yeah, I work as an associated clinical sciences um, faculty member teaching in the radiology department, and I also serve as the director for the Center of Diagnostic Imaging here on campus. All right, very good. So as you can see, we, we have a really good, very diverse group of faculty and the dean as well. So a great opportunity for questions or um, we thought, you know, one of our goals in doing these kinds of things is really it's just a wonderful thought leadership piece where we have many, many really highly regarded faculty um, and we're thankful for those whose schedules allowed for them to be here today. And so I think in the future, maybe we even have more of our many, many faculty uh, who, who represent SCU and LACC. Um, so with that said, we'll jump right in with the first question. Everybody kind of talked a little bit about how long you have been a chiropractor. So why don't we start with that? Uh, why did you decide you wanted to go into chiropractic? <laughs> All right. Who's got the best story? Uh, I'll, I'll go first. Right. Oh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> um, so uh, basically, it kind of started uh, when I was uh, second year undergrad. And uh, I was studying uh, for uh, my bachelor's degree in uh, microbiology. And uh, the second year undergrad, I, was, I knew I wanted to go into healthcare, but I wasn't sure which field in healthcare uh, I wanted to pursue. And I was very confused and I was debating different fields, either medical or dental uh, or physical therapy. And um, at, at the same time, I was also heavily into martial arts. Um, I used to do a lot of jujitsu, um, even in high school and into my first and second year uh, um, undergrad. And uh, one day in that second year of uh, undergrad, I was uh, practicing jujitsu and uh, I did the splits without warming up. Ouch. Uh, well, <laughs> yes. obviously that was a big, big mistake. And uh, I instantly felt severe, sharp stabbing pain in my uh, right hamstring. Uh, I was not able to walk. Uh, I was in tears. So someone helped me up and I was rushed to the hospital. I was rushed to the ER. And uh, the doctor came in. 
uh, unfortunately, he didn't even lay his hands on me. And uh, all he said is that uh, there's nothing we can do. You have to just give it time and it will heal by itself. And I was very upset about that. And I, I was like, well, Doc, what do you mean? You know, there's something you got to be able to do. And he said, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do. Here's some pain meds, pain medication. Here's a crutch and you know, get it well. I was like, okay. And um, back was then, it, was the pain medication the crutch, or did he actually give you a crutch? <laughs> no, he actually gave me a crutch. Yeah, he gave me one crutch, yeah. crutch yeah. to you, as, you know, for the right side. But, okay. And uh, you know, but back then, I was thinking, okay, it's going to heal by time, so I'm going to give it a few days, a couple of days, two, three days. You know, um, two, three days kind of passed by, and you know, still a lot of pain. Two, three weeks passed by, and you know, it was excruciating pain still. Um, you know, I couldn't walk. I was walking with crutch, help with the help of a crutch. At nighttime, I remember I would be in tears trying to fall asleep because any slight sudden movement in my leg, it would feel like a knife, someone stabbing me with a knife in that leg. And, um, you know, two, three months passed, I saw my family doctor for a follow-up visit, and he said the same exact thing. He's like, there's nothing we can do, uh, you know, it will heal by itself. And I was kind of very disappointed. And at that time, uh, a friend of mine uh, in the university uh, suggested, he said, hey, you know what, I know a chiropractic doctor, you should go see him. And back then I didn't know what chiropractic doctors did. And I was like, chiropractic doctor, uh, what is it that they do? And he explained that, you know, they're a specialist in muscle and bone. I was like, okay, that sounds good. Let me go see what, you know, what they can offer me. And I did go see this chiropractic doctor and, you know, first visit, he did a full evaluation. You know, he actually laid his hands on me, evaluated my hamstring, evaluated. Oh, by the way, so because I was walking, you know, for two, three months with a crutch and I was still attending uh, undergrad. So you got to imagine I'm walking across campus with a crutch, backpack, severe pain in my uh, hamstring. So I started developing back pain because there was an imbalance. I started getting imbalance in my low back. So I started developing back pain. That was another reason I, went to, I saw this chiropractor. So anyways, this chiropractic doctor saw me first visit, did a full eval. Um, treatment, he adjusted my low back, and I was so amazed. I got up, I didn't need the crutch anymore to walk. My pain was almost all gone, and I was like, wow. Uh, I was very amazed, uh, but at the same time, I was very upset that why, you know, no one had told me about this before. Um, but that's how it kind of all started. Out. Then I found my calling, I realized this is what I need to research more and, and kind of pursue, and that's how it all started. And as soon as I finished my bachelor's degree, um, you know, I had researched all the universities, and, uh, and I realized that CU is the place to be. And uh, the rest is history now. I'm standing mm -hmm. here. That's great. Yeah. That's a great story. Great story. Yes. <laughs> all right. We've all got one. Go for it. You, you want it? No, no. Okay. Go for it. All right. So I finished my undergrad in 1998, and I was um, just trying to figure out what am I going to do with my life. I was working in nonprofit management, and um, by the year 2000, I was managing this enormous like facility, um, uh, the biggest goodwill in the world, actually. And I was fine. I really liked the human service element. I really liked interacting with people and working with people. I didn't like the retail piece so much. Um, and I decided to go back to school, but I wasn't sure what. And I'd been trying to figure this out for years. So kind of rewind a little bit. When my wife and I were expecting our um, first child, it was either while she was pregnant or right after, she got really bad back and hip pain. And she's like, we got to go to the chiropractor. I was like, what is that? I actually didn't even know what a chiropractor was. So that was like, same as you, you had no background with it. And so we went in to see this chiropractor and the office seemed a little shady to me. You know, it was just like, he had a lot of like, we cure baldness and we cure this, that, and the other, you know, it was like, what? Okay. But she had background with it. Well, still he treated her like one time and the hip pain was gone. I was like, what on earth? You know, I didn't know how to reconcile the, what felt a little weird to me in the office with what was clearly effective, like care that he delivered. And so then later, I think it might've been a, another pregnancy or later on, she got really bad hip pain again. We went to see a different chiropractor and this was an extremely professional office. You know, one that having no background in chiropractic, I walked in, I'm like, okay, this feels like a healthcare office to me. Mm -hmm. Like I get this, but I still had no experience with chiropractic. So when he pulled out a model of a human anatomy and he pointed to the muscle on the model and said, this is your psoas muscle. This is what you, what's hurting. I literally thought, there's no such thing as a so <laughs> He's totally making that up. So this is, I mean, it's kind of funny because there was no like cultural authority or no background for a chiropractor. But anyway, he treated her once or twice. Pain was totally gone. And again, it's like, what is this thing I've never heard of that was like so effective for her? Uh, so after um, uh, I had decided to go back to school through this long process of like thinking it through, I kind of realized, well, I should 
actually do chiropractic, you know, after the experiences that we've had. Um, and so um, I, I went and told my wife, uh, you know what, I think I'm going to be a chiropractor. And she kind of laughed at me because this was like, I had no background here, you know. Um, but then she went in the shower and threw her back out. Like, oh. She's like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, I was able to like go take my prereqs because I really didn't have a science background. I just took all the science classes I could and I jumped into the program and um, the rest is history. So for those of you who are watching and you don't necessarily have the science background yet and you're deciding kind of late in the game and it's even a second career or whatever it is for you to come in, look, I'm the dean, so it can happen to you. Yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Anyone, any other stories before we... Oh, we got stories. Well, my, my story is a little different than yours. I sort of grew up with chiropractic from childhood. Wow. My uh, grandfather was a DC, practiced for about maybe 40 years from wow. 1945 up until um, his retirement. And uh, he died when I was just about uh, a freshman in undergrad. Mm -hmm. I never really considered chiropractic as, even though I was adjusted from birth, yeah. and I never really considered it as a career. Um, until I, after I graduated, you know, I was always interested in science. I've always wanted to uh, help people in yeah. terms of a cl clinical environment. I spent some time in a PhD research program studying uh, developmental biology, uh, decided it really wasn't for me and thought about uh, different uh, other career alternatives and then thought about chiropractic and thought about the experience I had and the knowledge I had from my grandfather. And I applied and graduated in 04, here I am. That's great. That's history. That's very good. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Did you guys have a cool story? Uh, not as cool as those. Cool. Those are no, cool. There'll be more. There'll be yeah. lots of opportunity right. for, right. for, for it too. Um, so, and actually, it's been such a good discussion so far of these stories of Dr. Aguilara and uh, of Dr. Egan, your wife, of people who have come to chiropractic and whose lives have really been changed. Um, and we also get to, especially all of you who are faculty, get to experience not just seeing patients' lives, but, but those incoming prospective students and their lives being changed right before your eyes over the three years that they're here with us. Um, so maybe we can talk a little about what, what, is, what, is, it, what is it like to be a faculty in, in LACC and a dean um, as, you, as you lead the administration and, and staff? Um, and, and, and how do you enjoy just uh, working with students every day and, and, your, and what gets you up and, and makes you want to be here uh, at SCU every day? Great question. <laughs> what do you love about working with students, basically, right? Well, I'll, real quick, I just want to say one short thing, and then please hear. I, I interviewed a student once who uh, was the first person in their family ever to go to college. And um, they had had two parents who actually literally worked in coal mines. And uh, this was the first student to go to school, and then she was going to be a doctor. And I, I remember interviewing her and her just kind of determination and dedication that she was going to be a healer, she was going to be a doctor. And to watch her go through the program with such drive, you know, that was, I mean, totally inspirational. And then to meet her, I got to meet her parents when they came later as she was at a clinic for the white coat ceremony and they were so proud. And you realize that, you know, this is a story that plays out one way or another over and over as people enter these, in this case, this chiropractic program and doctoral health professions program, it totally changed. It changes their life forever. I think every, every, either um, we all have had different background stories, but all of us wanted to help people mm -hmm. some way, even though we didn't know if it was going to be by like medicine, chiropractic, dentistry, we yes. knew we wanted to help people. Yes, yes, yes. And when we see our patients coming back, we, we might have a bunch of different stories, like a lot of stories different, but when we see a patient that comes to us and say, for any reason, what you did changes my life mm -hmm. in any way, that's, that's rewarding. That's exactly what we have, have been studying for so many yes. hours and we have dedicated our life to some, for so many hours to chiropractic. I remember one of my patients um, back when I was in practice, she was, she came to me, she was a lady, maybe 50 year old and up, maybe after six, five appointments, um, she came to me and she said, doctor, thank you. Now I can hold my granddaughter in my mm -hmm. hands. That's that's like something that you just Priceless. you don't mm -hmm. you don't think how much you can impact that person's life with a simple adjustment or a treatment or caring for that person for 30, 15, one hour, how many minutes you have with that person in your office. It's very rewarding. It gives me a good question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What I love is for our students, as you mentioned, what I love about being a faculty is 
to be able to, uh, for our students to be able to see that as well and to show them how that can be done and how in a, in a clinical setting, how we can teach them to get that done. And once the students see that, you know, you just see that spark in their eyes. They're like, wow, this stuff really works. Right. You know, and then they realize, yeah. you know, what kind of profession they're really in. And even, the, um, uh, you know, I think that's kind of, that's my coffee of the day. That yeah. what gives me, you know, uh, gives me the boost that wakes me up. I look very forward to that, to be able to get that same vow factor that I experienced as a patient, first time patient uh, in, uh, in the chiropractic profession, being able to see that over and over again with patients and um, to, uh, with the help of students and for them also to uh, see it and, uh, and realize the power. I think that's fantastic. That's, mm -hmm. um, that's yeah. priceless. I think the most anxious student or the most worried student is the student in like sixth trimester. You know, so they've been here for two years. They've learned so much. They like, how am I ever going to remember everything I've learned? And they know I'm about to start clinic. Mm -hmm. You know, and am I going to remember everything? I'm going to know everything. And they do. And it always works. But they're always worried in sixth term. But I love it when you get them in clinic, like you described, and, and the light bulb starts to turn on. It's like you watch them turn into a doctor. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, it, uh, it's like, oh, you know, they have these moments. Oh, it's mm -hmm. beautiful. And Sometimes it happens in a very kind of, it might just be a very mundane thing that happened, a very everyday thing for us that they mm -hmm. see. And sometimes it's because they're part of some extraordinary, you know, care. The patient that barely can walk in and walks out, you know, mm -hmm. jogging, basically. Absolutely. But yes. One of the exciting things for me as I've been here at SU is just getting to meet students and pass by them on the sidewalk. We have a very like open outdoor campus so you get to pass by and see each other whereas often you'll have like administration in one building and then you never see students because they're in the building where they're in class all day. Um, and so maybe we can talk a little bit about that, how, how it is to get to know students. We have Dr. Rivera Mellos here. Uh, students love Dr. Rivera Mellos. They love all of, all of them, but he's been in the dunk tank. He's been in the, uh, the talent show, you know. Um, I don't know if that's because they like him or not, the dunk tank. But, uh, uh, but we all, you know, get to connect with students in lots of different ways. Uh, maybe we can talk a little about that experience. Yeah, I, I mean, I love connecting with the students. It's one of the, I feel really lucky to working with students here on a day-to-day -day basis and that my job entails that is fantastic. I think they they push me as part of my job. Like I'm constantly learning because I need to be one step ahead of whatever questions they're going to be asking. If they ask something that I don't know, it's like, well, now I have something new to learn and I get to go learn it and bring it back to them the next day. And um, yeah, that's one of my favorite parts about working with students. And it is a pretty tight-knit community here at, at SU. There's, you know, not uh, so big of a community where it feels like you get lost um, and you, you know you see people in the halls or you see people outside in the, in the Glen and you say hi to them it's, yeah it feels very uh, like, a, like a tight little community people are helping each other out like you don't um, you know everybody by name. Oh, right? yeah. yeah. I mean, you know not everybody. everybody. By name. Yeah. So, if you <laughs> yeah. see anything, you don't, everybody's right. very nice for everybody. Um, it's really, really. The interaction cool. between departments, mm -hmm. between programs, mm -hmm. even. So, you're talking about like having a PA program on campus, having an acupuncture uh, campus on program, and they're right next to each other. So, the classroom sometimes are even shared, and sometimes yeah. you're dealing with students who are um, taking certain classes and certain programs and other programs, and there's a lot of diverse background in the students, too. I see that, too. So, they're coming into these uh, courses asking a lot of interesting questions and um, with, a, with a whole litany of, of backgrounds that are-, that are And additionally, the they're in some cases side by side in the same classroom, yeah, right? yeah. in their own perspective based on their desired degree program. Mm -hmm. no, absolutely. Yes. I, I love your point. I mean, there's only four or 500 chiropractic students here. Right? It's not, you know, some people are coming from undergrads where they're envisioning these huge, huge colleges. And we're, we're a smaller program compared to that. And you are. You, Chiropractors are people, people. We like the relations, we like the connections that we have, and we're small enough that, yeah, you're gonna know all your faculty by name. They're gonna know you, you know, it's, it's, it is a community that way. I think it's a great way to put it. Yeah, yeah Dr. Baudet touched on something I think really important. So like on, on one hand you have a, as a faculty, the faculty experience is that you're interacting with students, getting to know students, learning their names, passing by them, uh, even if they haven't been in your class for some time. But on the other hand, you're preparing, uh, there's tons of stuff they need to learn, they have tests they need to take and, and that we want them to pass and do well on. And so as you're preparing, what are some of the things that go on in your mind as faculty, as you're preparing for your next lesson or for the next term and how you wanna just keep improving and, and those kinds of things? <laughs> 
Uh, big question. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, some of the, the technology we're using now in recent years, we've just started implementing at SC, has been really effective, I think. Uh, a lot of digital testing stuff that we've been using through certain um, online portals. And recently, we've been able to add functionality to that where we're able to, like in the reality class specifically, put up a picture and the student can have it right there on their iPad. And we ask them, where on the picture is this pathology, this anatomy, or whatever? And they put the pin on the picture to indicate what, you know, it really, asks the questions in a different way and kind of raises the standards a little bit to the just the baseline or education levels instead of you know a multiple choice where they you know, may have a 25 percent chance of getting it right now they really need to know exactly what it is and it's really helpful for, for stuff like that so i've been really um encouraged by the, the stuff that we've seen lately technologically speaking in the classrooms good point uh, what i do like about uh, especially the student clinic setting is that students have many different options uh, for kind of different experiences, different kinds of uh, patients, different, uh, different kind of demographics, uh, where they can rotate through different clinics and get the full experience from um, different patient groups. Um, and because um, the, I guess, uh, the ratio between the supervising clinicians and the students are, lo uh, are, are great, so the groups are not that big, um, the students can, uh, with the supervising clinician, can get together, go over cases, go over patient cases, real life patient cases, and get a, a lot. Instead of one intern coming in and seeing that one patient, we're able to have four or five other clinical students come in at the same time with that same patient. If it's a unique case, if it's a, if it's a case uh, that I feel like uh, patients can really learn from, they can all come in in that small group and kind of get that experience where, you know, in a other setting, you may not be able to have 20 clinical students come in and with one patient right. and, you know, go over their case, you know, a patient will like, well, you know, why is all these people are here? But a smaller setting like that, I think is very beneficial, great for students. That way, they're all learning on almost all patients at the same time throughout that clinic shift. I know with Dr. Baudet on the um, IPC committee and things as we've interacted, there's a lot of thinking about the, the learning outcomes and objectives and things. Uh, are there others that, that others would say about just things you think about as we develop curriculum and as we try to strengthen it that are, that are things that are really important to us here at SCU? Well, we do have um, accrediting standards uh, based on national and regional accreditors and, and also professional accreditors, and that dictates the individual outcomes and individual course objectives which help us to uh, tailor our assessments, whether it is MCQ, whether it is essay, whether it's practical hands-on examination assessments based on what our creditors basically say a uh, graduate and an effective uh, representative of our degree programs should actually in fact embody. So our assessments are uh, detailed and designed with that in mind. Mm -hmm. Can we start by thinking like what because we have all these, we do, they, these are creditors and every program does. And we also think among ourselves, we, this is something we talk about a lot. Um, what, what do we want our graduates to be known for? And, and what outcomes do we want to see? We know there's the ones that are going to have to be there. And what else? What else would we like to have our graduate? And we start with that end in mind and try to work backwards, you know, to make sure. And then we have, you know, measurements in place to make sure the people are progressing along as they should. And there's supports in place. And there's... Um, we, if we administer this because we believe they can succeed in this program, we won't admit someone we don't think can make it. And so then, once you're in the program, how can we support you and help you so that you can be all these things that um, that our creditors say a chiropractor should be and all these things we say, you know, mm -hmm. that a chiropractor should be. And we also base our curriculum in FDA's base uh, yeah. and also in best practices, right? Yeah. So we try to provide to our students the best experience, the best, uh, a methodology and the best learning experience and clinical experience during their through the through their program so mm -hmm. so, so maybe to continue the line of thinking and then thinking of our audience maybe a lot of prospective students and they're debating you know should i do chiropractic yes. um, or other or other yes. things and, you know, like dr aguilar mentioned earlier and i think a lot of our students are in the same place thinking about is it physical therapy for me or what's the thing that i want to do um, and so maybe we can think about what it's what it's like because a lot of you've been clinicians and chiropractors in practice yourself, if not all of you. Um, what it's like to be a chiropractor, and what are some of the nuances and things that are unique to that type of profession, uh, as maybe compared to a lot of other really great professions. But as someone's maybe thinking, 
and, and wants to just learn more, what could we tell them about that? Well, I would say uh, it's a little bit more of a personal touch mm -hmm. um, rather than just sitting down and getting a piece of paper that you would have to take to a pharmacy, not to say that that doesn't have its place. It's a little bit more of a hands-on personal interaction on a day-to-day -day basis between you as the caregiver and the patient that's seeking your help. And that's kind of what attracted me, um, attracted me to it from the beginning. Yeah, I mean, people love their chiropractors. I mean, I would, they would use that word, they love their chiropractors and the chiropractors love their patients. I mean, it's a really, like you say, it's very personal. And so if someone's choosing to open a practice or to, you know, to work as a chiropractor there, really that they have the service oriented mindset, you know, they're really there for their communities. They're gonna see their patients um, over sometimes many years, depending on the condition that a person has, and sometimes they're just be in and out and get fixed. But um, it's very interpersonal. And, and one of the things I liked best about being a chiropractor was um, pa patients would come in, they'd be in pain, you would figure out what to do using your brain and your hands and you know just manual testing and just to the extent you could, sometimes you need another testing. But it was just you and the patient. And then you apply a treatment that they respond to immediately, almost every time. Uh, and they, they walk out feeling better than they came in. And so all day long, you're having people leave happy, like all day long mm -hmm. and saying thank you. And, 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 and um, that is like the most positive possible work environment, you know, is to have all day long people leaving saying, wow, thank you, wow, thank you, just it's over and over. Yeah. Every day. It's, yeah. We it's talked amazing. earlier, we were talking about, you said that it's like an immediate kind it of It is, thing. it's immediate. I, I've often thought about that, you know, like if I was a doctor using your prescription analogy, if, some, if it could be the perfect right prescription for that problem. And, and most of the time they are, right? So it could be the perfect right prescription for whatever the problem is. The person's gonna go home and take it and get better. And I'm not gonna get to see it, you know? But, but the beautiful thing about chiropractic is there's something happening right there and they leave, you know. And you see it. And you see right it. Away. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's not like it all has to happen in an office. You're gonna send them home with exercises and lifestyle changes, but there's a ton that happens there and it's, mm -hmm. it's pretty awesome. Um, what I what I like a, a lot about chiropractic, I look at it as you know modernized healthcare, where you know you see everything. Our laptop has modernized, you know, our watches have, have modernized, our cell phones have modernized, uh, you know everything. Uh, and then I look at chiropractic as modern healthcare is because thanks to Google, obviously a lot of patients are smart now. You know they, they Google everything. <laughs> right? Doctor Google. Right. Yeah, Doctor Google. There you go. And uh, you know when they Google their medication and they see okay my temporarily fix one thing, but then it gives them 10 other uh, side effects. Uh, you know, patients are very smart and they choose, they rather have something more natural, more holistic. And, you know, obviously chiropractic is one of those options. Yeah. And uh, I feel like it's only gonna get more and more patients gonna demand it more and more um, as a modern new age uh, healthcare where uh, we try to prevent diseases instead of treat it which uh, prevent and uh, treat or treat the cause instead of just treat the symptoms. And uh, I think demand will only increase based on that. And when you treat it, you treat it conservatively. Like exactly. what's, the, what's the simplest treatment that will be effective for this patient? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. One thing that I also love about chiropractic, getting some of your, uh, uh, your speech is that um, when I used to teach from a, a different school in a different country, uh, people would ask me, when I graduate, what do I need, like for my office? And I would say, you need a chiropractic table, because this, you would need it. Um, and you need your brain and your hands. Yes. And that's it. Yes. That's it. And although it's, a, yes. uh, as you said, it's a modern, like, yes. chiro like yes. the way of doing yes. it, that's all you need. Yes, yes. That's so, true. Because people say, well, maybe if I need, if I go to dentistry, I'll have to, I will need all those like modern like tools and gadgets because yes. they're always improving. Yes. They're always like yes. getting better in their technology and everything. We we have some gadgets too that mm -hmm. yes. they're cool tools that yes. we can use and as chiropractors. Yeah, yeah, they're fun too. Uh, but if you don't have yeah. them, yeah. you can still work. Exactly. So. Yeah. That's, that's another beauty of it. Yeah, that's a good point you mentioned. When we uh, first started the community clinic, so uh, a lot of students would ask, you know, me, okay, what modalities do you have? You know, is it high tech? Yep. And I would always tell them, we have two modalities, right hand, left hand. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that yeah. as much as that's you want, good. just don't want to burn the skin. <laughs> yeah, I worked at the VA for five or six years, and I, literally, it's it. We had tables, 
we had hands. We had a couple of like special shaped pillows and things, but that's yeah. basically it. So yeah, there's so much you can do. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of chiropractic people, people have an image in their mind of what chiropractic is. Everybody knows it. Well, you can go get your back worked on or whatever. And they can picture what a manual adjustment is. We do years of training and a lot of that is to learn how to diagnose with your hands too and how to do tests and procedures on the body to know how to work. And and you can you can do so much mm -hmm. just as a healthcare provider who's willing to touch a person, mm -hmm. willing to think mm -hmm. how many of us have been to the doctor and been surprised when they left and we were not actually touched, mm -hmm. you know, because no matter what the problem was. Mm -hmm. um, there's plenty of great physicians out there, but I'm still always shocked when I go in and, and there wasn't any con like actual contact mm -hmm. or something. So really touching on this discussion around the, that you, you know, use your hands and use your presence mm -hmm. and the uh, practitioner experience and what that's like. So earlier we talked about the faculty and student experience. Maybe we can dive a little deeper on the, the, the practitioner patient experience. And, and as a practitioner, if a student, a prospective student's listening and they're wondering, what's a day in my life going to be like? What will my experience be like as a chiropractor? maybe in addition to using their hands and being present with patients, what's a, what's a typical day like? Well, <laughs> I'm a practitioner, I guess. So, <laughs> I mean, you, so you, are, you are a current practitioner. Yes. Yes. So do you want to take that one? Yeah. Uh, well, basically you go in the office and they're, you know, patients for us, you know, 8 a.m. already patients kind of lined up and they're waiting to come in and we see patients do treatments. Typically on a first uh, new patient, um, we can take about one hour because we do full evaluation, full chiropractic, orthopedic, neurologic examination, even a physical exam. So a first visit takes all of that. And then once we come up with the actual diagnosis, uh, then we start treatment. And then from there on, treatments can last uh, anywhere. Uh, each follow-up treatment can last anywhere from 20 minutes to 30 minutes. If there's rehab, maybe a little bit longer. Um, and uh, basically now we have a lot of modalities in the office. Obviously we have different tools that we use in addition to our uh, hands. Um, you know, we have, uh, uh, we have Graston tools. We have a Leander table, like a, like a traction table for the, uh, uh, for the spine and for the disc. Uh, uh, we have rehab exercises. Um, so we have now a lot of tools that you can use as a chiropractic doctor, even physiotherapy. So uh, a lot of times patients uh, think that, okay, chiropractors, uh, they just adjust the bone, but that's not the case. Uh, we provide nutritional counseling. Well, we, uh, we can do, uh, we, we do physiotherapy, we do rehab, uh, we do chiropractic adjustments, um, we do lifestyle. So basically uh, I look at it as a, a whole, uh, looking, at, uh, as a, uh, looking at the patient as a whole treatment, not just uh, treating, for example, their back pain, but First, uh, finding out why they got the back pain initially. We can treat that back pain, you know, two, three times a week forever. But if we don't treat the cause, uh, it's kind of, I always give an example. I said, okay, the patient, it's like you come in, you cut your finger, we come in, we put a bandage, you go back home, you can take a knife and you cut it again. So chiropractic treatment is kind of like that bandage. We can treat it, we can help it. We can even maybe uh, treat it for a long time. But if we don't treat the cause, it's going to keep coming back. And that's what chiropractic is, treating really the cause um, uh, of you know, a lot of diagnosis. And we do that on a daily basis with nutrition, with uh, proper uh, ergonomics. For example, if a, pa uh, if a patient's sitting on a desk, bad posture on a computer all day long, and we teach them about the proper ergonomics uh, while they're on the desk. Um, if the patient is doing a lot of gardening, uh, we um, show them uh, correct posture. So it not only, it's not only you know doing chiropractic treatments, but uh, kind of modifying their lifestyle. More holistic. More holistic. Really, yes. isn't it the whole person? So that's what chiropractors do. That's, um, that's. But I would say too, for someone who's listening, part of the reason your new patient visits are an hour and your follow-ups are half hours, you're supervising students who exactly. are teaching at the same time. Yes. So I know when I was supervising care. I would do the same. I'd do patient visits for an hour and follow up to half hour, but I would have three follow ups happening at the same time. Exactly. Different yes. students that oh, are supervising. Absolutely. So, for someone who's watching and thinking, how would my own practice be someday? They yes. would, those would probably be shorter visits because oh, it would just be absolutely. you and the patient absolutely. without the teaching oh, element. Oh, absolutely. Right. I, I've had yeah. uh, offices myself right. that uh, you know, we were seeing 100 patients. Yeah, you can see more patients. Exactly. Yeah, so that, yeah, this is because it's a clinical setting. Uh, students are learning we're teaching. and yeah. we're teaching. Um, uh, so, we have to spend make sure that you know students are learning they're taking their time we don't want to rush the students obviously that's why we put that extra time and effort 
and uh, and really patients even appreciate that. They do. Some of them really love it. But yeah, the best part of the day is the treatment part. If you're if you're talking day to day practice, there's also you got to do documentation. You're dealing with billing. You've got those other things, and they're there. And actually, nobody really likes that part. And that's true across all the health professions. But that is that is a part of your day. That's not your whole day, you know. And so you do that so that you can continue to have the patient contact, and um, which is you know the bulk of your day. Same way when you do a really good meal, you have to wash the dishes. You start to do the dishes. Exactly right. That's a great way yeah. to think of it. Or you can yeah. delegate others. Well, that's, that's true. true. Yeah, that's, that's true. true. That's the key. Yeah. As long as you trust them. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, you know, patients really do, they, they connect. So you, you, um, I, when I took this job here to move here two years ago, I actually had a patient who found out I was leaving. I hadn't even worked in that clinic for a while. And I'd given him my phone number once and he was really, really sore. And he actually called me up and he's like, I heard you took this job in California, go in there. And he's like, yeah. And he's like, Dr. Egan, like, you were the best. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, I'm like, what? Now hold on. But he's, he actually started to cry. And this is this grown man who was running his own contractor business. You know, he's a like, kitchen installer. He's just like, you know, you made such a difference for me. And I know where you go. I just love what you guys do. I love that you're teaching chiropractic. I know you're going to make a difference. And just, but he's just like, go get him. You know what I mean? But it was this really emotional response from someone who um, just loved the care and appreciated the attention that had been given. So that was awesome. Yeah, yeah, great way to sum up. We talk about the day in the life. Mm -hmm. it's, it's changing lives throughout your entire day. And that's such a really cool thing. Um, so I want to expand on something that you said earlier. So you're talking about this, in, talking about day in the life, the scope of practice and how it can be uh, everything from rehab to nutrition to lifestyle mm -hmm. medicine to whole person treatment. And I do think that's a common misconception. It's like the neck and spine adjustment. That's the tools in the toolbox. Yes. Um, but it's really upper extremity, lower extremity, and it's it's a lot of things, neuromusculoskeletal, the whole the yes. whole kind of thing. So maybe we can expand on some, what are some of the other scope of practice of things that are included in chiropractic to give our, the viewers a good idea of, of what's included there. Well, part of the training in our curriculum includes uh, nutrition, biochemical, clinical as well as uh, physiotherapy, both passive and active um, utilization of functional medicine. And um, we're gonna go through a lot of different technique systems that fall under the umbrella of chiropractic so that if the, if the student would uh, so choose to uh, investigate that particular um, avenue. In addition, we also cover instruction on basic special populations, but like what to do with the pediatric patient, what to do with the geriatric patient, men's health, women's health. Yeah. It's really, and it's really like as a chiropractor, you're a physician, so you have a responsibility to be able to diagnose. And so we, we teach from the ground up, you know, from the basics of, you know, biochemistry and cell physiology and anatomy and biomechanics all the way through pathology, radiology, yes, and, right? radiology. and so that when a patient walks in, you are responsible to them as a physician to be able to, A, do they belong in your office? Do they have a condition that you're able to treat? Are you the best person to treat them? Do they, is the diagnosis such that they belong in another office or belong to be co-managed? And that's a responsibility you have. And so uh, your training here will make sure you're ready to do that. Mm -hmm. Actually, Dr. Dr. Bonnet does a lot of those diagnosis courses, but, mm -hmm. but yeah, this is mm -hmm. the responsibility. And also x-ray uh, is a huge part of the practice mm -hmm. where the chiropractic doctors, uh, if it's necessary, obviously not on every patient, but if it's necessary, we recommend x-rays or MRI or imaging mm -hmm. to help us better diagnose patients as well. And that comes very handy. Uh, our students go through extensive training, obviously, um, to uh, get trained into taking and reading x-rays, MRIs. And uh, that, that's a great tool in, in practice um, to help us diagnose a better patient. Yep. Yep. There's a lot of specialties you can kind of go into, right? As also, I think it's something like 30 or 40% of our students are um, some kind of athletic or sports minded. Uh, looking to go into learning sideline skills, they're doing taping, they're doing a lot of things that may cross over typically in like physical therapy, athletic training. There's others who are do learning. We have lots of different techniques, so if they want to learn those, maybe we can yep. come back and talk about that in a minute. Some, uh, I was just talking to a student last week who said he's going to specialize in whiplash, and that's mm -hmm. really where he wanted to go. Um, so what are some others that, that uh, we could talk about that are specialties? Or well, expand on yes. this. <laughs> I know. Um, up. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah. after I finished my DC program here, I did uh, a radiology residency here, a diagnostic imaging residency on campus that we offer currently. And it is a three year full time residency focused specifically on uh, x rays, CT, MRI, imaging of the body. And it has a strong musculoskeletal focus. 
Um, we also have a sports medicine program here. Personally, I like the diet scene. <laughs> a lot better. But, Not sure why. Um, yeah, so it, it's a really fun, um, fun is a, is a relative term. Three years of x-rays and radiology can be tedious for some people. So my day-to-day -day practice looks a lot different than some of your day-to-day -day practices. A lot of it, for me, entails reading images, interpreting images, and sending out reports to doctors, and getting feedback from doctors and things like that. So um, the, the exciting thing about the specialty in the diagnostic imaging right now for me is the, the use of musculoskeletal ultrasound, which within the state of California does fall within our scope to use um, as chiropractors. It'll be different from state to state, um, but it's a, it's a modality that we've been using to assess for rotator cuff tears and the sports medicine program has been utilizing our services pretty uh, widely lately. And uh, it's been really great to see the, the integration of like sports medicine and the diagnostic imaging yeah. um, awesome. parts of the university and those subspecialties kind of come together. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a, a diplomate program in, uh, in diagnostic imaging. And as, okay. and as I said, uh, uh, when a graduate can specialize in maybe just taking care of women's health or just pediatrics or um, maybe go more towards a sports um, and sideline tracking um, type of uh, practice too. So after they graduate, they have this like huge, like so many different options that they can go and they can specialize or they can have their office and treat a little bit of a little bit of each one of those if they want. They can have like a family type of um, uh, office or practice that they can treat all, everybody in the family. They can treat the elderly in that family, the newborn and the, uh, the regular adult. So it's, it's really good to see how much they can uh, change in so many different people's yeah, lives. A lot of avenues. Yeah. My, my family actually uses a chiropractor that does home visits. So they come to our house and they, they, they treat us there. Um, and so, and you have these avenues postgraduate, like to do diplomates, which is what uh, Hector did. But then even before you graduate, if you're in our program, uh, we offer, it's like 25 or 30 courses a term. There's probably 70 or 80 total selective courses that we have. Might be more than that, actually. Yeah. It's actually probably hundreds. I don't know. Might be more than that. <laughs> anyway, we offer so many. So a student can tailor the program. So if they if they want to take sports medicine courses before they graduate or functional medicine courses or additional technique courses, they, there's a good part of their program that they can tailor towards their own interest. Um, so I think that's pretty cool. And, and there's a lot of those options. And then depending on how they want to practice, they could actually tailor part of their clinical experience mm -hmm. too, because we let people um, rotate through different offices and we have hundreds of affiliated mm -hmm. uh, offices. And if there's one they want that we don't have, we can help make that happen. Mm -hmm. So, And the clinical experience starts a, a little bit earlier than you might expect in as much as students can, in fact, uh, go and observe other doctors in their offices for credit a little bit earlier than they enter their own clinical uh, yeah. clerkship. Mm -hmm. And a lot term yeah. three, they, they can start, start yeah. as early as, as term three, so they can get credit for that and they can go observe in their term three. But most importantly, they have the experience. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly. right. Yeah. And they can, uh, they can start, they observe in term three and four, right? Mm -hmm. And they can start doing some simple histories and procedures in term Take five and note. six. Yes, correct. And that can be in any of these affiliated clinics. Any of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then they when, once they go through their clinical experience with the program, with the core curriculum, um, they can, then they can go through this, those clinics too, or even the same clinic that they kept since term three, maybe, they will go to that same clinic and start help the, helping the doctor adjust those patients. They're going to be working under that doctor's supervision uh, and maybe just get their job their position job right away. Right. That's right. So we have, um, we have most of our mm -hmm. students when they graduate tell us they have a job already uh, or a very likely job. And it's, I think a big part of it is because yeah. we have so many affiliated clinics mm -hmm. that they go and work in. Mm -hmm. It's one of the I think benefits of being in greater Los yeah. Angeles, greater sure. Orange County, Southern California, and being one of the, the only chiropractic college in that sort of really southwestern type of, of area. Yeah. There's just whatever type of practice you start to get interested in when it comes time for rotations, there's a good likelihood that you can find a doctor that's already on our list that you could go and if not, we could they can go through the process yeah. for, for that approval as well. That's a great point. I mean, it's interesting to think we're in this in the southwestern United States, kind of, we're really the only chiropractic college. And people think, well, you're in LA, you might picture this huge city. We're in this really like pretty residential, quiet area, but we are in the middle of a very populous area. And so, yeah, 
whatever kind of practice or experience you're looking to have, like it's here. And then also when it comes to you're ready to go to the beach or to the mountains, mm -hmm. they're all here to exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so there's really great opportunities in, in terms of the kind of scope you, or, and type of specialty you can do. Yep. Also in terms of you can own your own practice, you can work in other kinds of settings. What are some of those other settings you could end up uh, either being employed in or becoming a leader and owning kind of your own thing? Do we represent, so I don't know you guys' all practice history. Like I worked in the VA for five or six years. That was actually where my practice was. And then I worked in the clinic within a chiropractic college. In a way what you're doing, except you're doing it in the community. Yes, yes. So have, did any of you own your own practice? Did you do that for a while? A little while. Yeah. And then- I did it in those countries, so, country, so. <laughs> it's kind of so, different, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so uh, I have owned my own practices. I had multiple and I did that for about 15 years. Uh, before joining um, SU, and it was a great, uh, fantastic experience. We helped a lot of patients, um, multiple offices, very busy, yeah. um, and uh, I feel very blessed to be in this profession. But uh, you know, one thing, um, prospect uh, uh, students that do need to realize: any profession you go into, it takes hard work. It doesn't matter if you're in dentistry, your medical field, or chiropractic, physical therapy, PA, acupuncture. Uh, you know. In my experience, um, success not uh, in terms of uh, academic, but also uh, in running a practice, mm -hmm. it's about hard work. You know, if uh, someone is dedicated and they're willing to put that time, well, willing to put that extra time, uh, I tell my students, um, you know, sometimes uh, people work nine to five, sometimes people work five to nine. So that hard work really makes a big difference, mm -hmm. um, and. You know, in any profession, I, I believe if you have that, you know, you can be very successful. And, uh, but yeah, so back to, yeah, I've had uh, my practices and I did private practice and it was great and I enjoyed it very much. And um, yeah, it was a great experience for me. Yeah, and I hear a lot from students about going into the field, they either open up their own practice or they find a couple of their classmates who they really bonded mm -hmm. with and they open up one together or they associate with a doctor that they did the preceptorship with and they'll work under that doctor for a couple of years before going on their own. But a big trend I've seen lately has been to, big, uh, to work in like a big multidisciplinary office where they're working with uh, a nurse practitioner and a PA and an MD and a DO and they're all working together in an office, getting the patient what they need. Um, it, it's often uh, works out really nicely for the chiropractor because they can serve multiple roles and now either it's doing rehab or it's you know, seeing patients the intake and doing a day-to-day -day -day. Um, assessment there. So, um, I've, yeah, I've noticed that as a, as a trend recently. Um, these bigger offices start to show up with uh, sure. a lot of integrated stuff. And I think the stuff we're doing at SU is hopefully preparing them for that kind of experience because they are experiencing different um, professional environment here where they're getting to interact with physicians, assistants, and acupuncturists on a day to day basis. That's a great point. Mm -hmm. yeah, Multidisciplinary definitely is yeah. the way of the future. You know, yeah. so, to co-manage patients with uh, other medical doctors, orthopedic surgeons, neurologists. You know, we at the community clinic, we always refer patients out uh, to co-manage with their family um, MD, ortho, neuro, uh, consult, pain management. That's definitely, that way a patient can get, you know, different kind of um, uh, treatments that they need for their condition. And that's where the future is going. Um, you know, kind of like a one-stop shop uh, where they have different, uh, uh, Care providers, just like here in SCU uh, uh, clinic here on campus, uh, we have acupuncture, we have a, uh, we have a PA, we have chiropractic, we have massage, urgent care. Yes, yeah. urgent care. Yeah. I mean that's fantastic. That's yeah. a one-stop shop. Um, that's great. And I highly urge anyone that's interested in becoming like a chiropractor. I think first, obviously, you should come visit the campus. Second, I think uh, they should go into the student uh, into the SCU clinic. Uh, and become a patient, kind of get a hands-on experience on what it's like to be a patient under treatment of a chiropractic doctor. I think to get that experience, uh, a hands-on experience like that will really um, uh, show them what this is really about and that will help them in uh, deciding you know, what they want to do. That's a great point. And um, the, the one other kind of practice I would throw out there, because we've talked about owning our own multidisciplinary community, is uh, actually working in hospital systems and in healthcare networks. Um, the surveys we're seeing is something like 
three to four to six percent of chiropractors actually have hospital privileges, which when you that's thousands of chiropractors. And um, that's a growing opportunity as well. I mean, my experience in the VA, um, I actually had credentials at one point at a long term care hospital and also in the VA. And it's, it's a it's a growing number of chiropractors. So there's really a lot of possibilities for people, uh, plus sports teams and, you know, yeah. you name it. So. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, just to add something. There is a program, uh, manipulation under anesthesia, which actually I'm certified and I've performed many of those in the past, uh, where you can get privileges at surgery centers, out outpatient surgery centers, uh, where um, where you can provide that service and where patients are under anesthesia with an anesthesiologist, um, obviously, where they put the patient uh, under uh, anesthesia and there's a chiropractic procedure that you do, that it's all done under a surgical setting. Yeah, this was great. You guys answered like all the questions. Was, was so yeah, we've talked about all these different lines of growth also in the industry. So from owning your own practice, and then I'll also tie in that uh, at SCU, students are really prepared. They take the business classes, they take things like that. I actually will be teaching a marketing class a selective right. that they can take, so they're prepared to get patients in and retain those patients. Uh, the integrative setting, they're really prepared for that as well, I would say, with our yeah. integrative interprofessional model. Um, and then some of those up and coming ones, for example, like the US Olympics, um, I think it was 20, 30 years ago, it's like one chiropractor. Now there's lots of chiropractors and actually, uh, shameless plug, I think it's yeah. something like 80% of, of the chiropractors came from SEU who were with the US Olympic Committee. So the, all these different industries are growing uh, whatever line of industry you think about. It's a lot of good opportunities. Right. Plus the medical director was a chiropractor mm -hmm. and actually one of our affiliated faculty, but yeah, so yeah. lots yeah. of opportunities. This is great. Um, so we're getting close to the end of our time. So maybe we'll kind of get start to wrap up with, with a closing thought here. Just thinking about the chiropractic industry. So we've really covered a lot of it, but um, as those who are really have a good idea of the, the industry and, and have your ear to the ground of what's happening, what do you see happening? Where do you see it going? Uh, how is the chiropractic industry changing and sort of poised uh, for change and growth in the decades to come? Ooh, we each got to give like a 15 to 30 second answer, right? <laughs> However, you yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I think uh, there is definitely a niche for our profession as um, the population really just kind of wants to get away from all of the opioids and all of the other uh, more allopathic types of uh, treatments for more of a natural approach. And I think that's a, a very handsome way for us to really kind of maintain and even expand on um, what it is we do very well already. And don't forget all your other thoughts, but let's talk about that one for a minute. Um, can, you, can you talk about the recent change like in West Virginia and some of the others as, as with the opioid, opioid crisis and, and that opportunity? Um, yeah, I mean, that just that there are states and across the country and uh, insurance agencies, the opioid crisis has taken such a toll. Uh, it is killing more people per year now than, you know, we, we have more people dying from drugs than we did ever, peak year of handgun deaths and, HIV and car crash deaths. I mean, this is, this is a humongous problem. Somebody's dying every 15 minutes in the U.S. from an opioid overdose. Um, that states are saying, look, you cannot prescribe somebody a long-term opioid unless you have tried conservative care first. For example, acupuncture, chiropractic, physical therapy. And insurance companies are saying, you may not have that surgery, you may not have that opioid prescription unless you've seen a chiropractor first. And so this is a change that, while it might be late in coming to say you should try the most conservative, simplest care first, it is actually coming. Now, that's one of the reasons I really believe the brightest days for chiropractic still lie ahead is because there is this enormous kind of untapped market for natural conservative care and to try that first. So yeah, so that's a good example. What are some other, some other ways that you, you see the, the industry changing and, and growing over the decades to come? I think Dr. Gloria mentioned something that's very important, the more multidisciplinary yes. Um, yes. tendency that our students are starting in Dr. Rigor model too. Uh, I think in the past, people would just stay in their own little office bubble. Mm -hmm. And now the world has become so much smaller because we have so much many ways of easy communication. And that's that helps also us to have, even if you are in a, your little own office and you don't have anybody else in your office, you still can refer, you still can have communication, you can, you can still uh, have good interaction with other professionals that can help your patients as a whole. So, um, I think that's also one way that the industry is going forward, and I think it's a great way to treat our patients. 
<laughs> yeah. So I would throw one in coming across to patient-centered care. Mm -hmm. um, so it kind of pulls into the integrative and everything you mm -hmm. just said that it's not about, all right, I'm a chiropractor, so you come to me, this is the only kind of treatment you're going to get. I have to think, no, we're thinking patient-centered. What's a patient needed? So if we surround them with uh, people who think like a team, healthcare providers who aren't in silos, like you said, or in their own little bubble. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's why we try to educate that way that you, you don't ever get to build the bubble because we're, we're, you're getting trained with acupuncturists and PA students and others. Um, you're still gonna have a strong identity as a chiropractor, but you're gonna also have an identity as a team and the patients at the center. And I think that that's the future of care is patient-centered. And pulling care. something from this too, if you have two 50-year-old males you might not treat them the same way mm -hmm. because of the patient center type of yep. type of care. Um, maybe for this one, 50 year old male, this treatment will work. Maybe for this one, 50 year old male, this the same treatment will not work. We'll have to do something completely different. So having the patient in the center of, as we call the center of care, uh, is making a lot of those changes too. Yeah. All right. Any closing thoughts or anything as we? Um, as we finish up, that you'd say to a prospective student, if they're trying, if they're thinking about, should I, should I consider chiropractic? And if I do, if I've, if I have my heart set on chiropractic, should I consider SCU? Um, what are some any closing thoughts we could give them? Yes, and yes. What is the industry doing? And what's the future yeah. hold? I think the future is with with whoever's watching right now. It's That's with right. prospective students. Like, the, like you said, the best is probably yet to come. And what we see in the future is going to be molded by our current students and our, and our prospective students now. So it is what you make it. It's going to be what they make it. So that's an exciting thought for me because mm -hmm. I think we have places to grow, but I uh, need to be the last one to talk. That was beautiful. I totally yeah. agree. <laughs> the future is with the person watching. Yeah. yeah, very good. A good, good, good way to end it. Yeah, you know, that's uh, great. You know, SCU, and, and of course, LACC is one of, of many things we offer here at SCU in terms of programs. But the big picture is, is as our president says, that we're uh, transforming and redefining healthcare and healthcare education. It's all about that patient at the center. That's what we are all here for and what we really care about. Um, and so we want to thank uh, our panelists all for joining us. A sincere thank you to you. Um, and thank you all who have joined us and all those who watched uh, the video all the way to the end on YouTube uh, so far. Uh, even if you did on fast forward, it's okay. Um, yeah. And just thanks for joining us. We do, again, have a lot of other webinars we often do. We'll, we'll try to have uh, our panel. Maybe we'll switch in some other faculty and some future ones for chiropractic and our other programs. Um, the upcoming ones, if you want to register for the live ones, again, are always at scuhs.edu slash events. And then we also always have them up on our YouTube channel. The homepage of our website has a YouTube icon. You can get right there to the YouTube channel that way. Um, so thank you again to uh, all the, of our guests. And we uh, wish you all the best in your search. And uh, thank you again for joining us. Thank you. Bye.